Listen, aside from your family and your loved ones and your friends, no one remembers average and ordinary. No one does. Today, I'm going to share with you 10 stories, 10 customer service stories where somebody took it to a whole different level, and today, someone like me is talking about it on a video. So before I get into the episode, if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, please do so. And if you got any thoughts about today's episode, comment below. Let me get right into it. The first story I'm going to tell you is out of this book called The Hero Effect by Kevin Brown. Very simple book, but a great book. Our home office right now, they're all reading this book because everybody's working on customer service in 2020. So having said that, while I'm reading this book, I'm talking to Mario. We're talking about one of the stories in the book has to do with Disney. It's a story of his son, Josh Brown, who is autistic. And at seven years old, his son finds out about Disneyland and he falls in love and falls in love about the Disney stories. At nine years old, he decides to take his son to Disneyland. So they go there. They wake up in the morning. They want to go have some uh, breakfast. When they walk in, hostess, very nice. They get to the table. Waitress comes. Terrible attitude this waitress has got to the entire family. Cold, temperamental, disrespect. Just at all has no tolerance for customer service. And they're going through all the other stuff. And uh, like this, and my son, he'd like to have apple pancakes, you know, just blow them off and then goes off. Then all of a sudden, the executive chef shows up. The executive chef shows up and says, listen, Josh, what can I get you? And Josh says, I'd like to have apple can- pancakes. He says, look, I spoke to your family. I kind of know what, how you like it to be made, but we don't have it. Is it okay if I get you eggs and bacon? And he says, yeah, sure, I'll have that. Great. Uh, uh, Bea walks away, the executive chef. She walks away, they bring the regular breakfast, all good to go. They eat, they leave, they go home. You know, like, why was the attitude of the waitress so bad? You're living in the happiest place, or you're working at the happiest place on earth. Why do you have this kind of an attitude? They leave, kind of messing with their head a little bit about the customer service that was given by the waitress. Next day, they want to eat. You only got one place to go, it's this place. They go in, they see the hostess, very nice. Waitress comes, sees their face, walks off again. But the, 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 the executive chef sees Josh Brown and says, oh, that's Aunt Bea. She shows up. She says, hey, what would you like to have for breakfast? They talk about it. She knows what he wants. He has, she has the uh, apple pancakes. They say, wait a minute. I thought you don't have apple pancakes on your menu. She says, yes, I know you, I don't. So how do you have it now? Did you guys add it to your menu? No. How did you get it? I went to the store and I bought it. On your own time? Yes. I left work. I realized how to make it, I came back, I bought the recipe, I have it in the back, I'd like to bring it to you. Family's like, are you kidding me? Yeah, no problem. Aunt Bill goes back, that's what the kid, Josh calls him, goes back, cooks it, brings it back to the kid. Kid's like, wait a minute, this is how, well, they eat the food. Kevin, the father's blown away. They go back to this place spending money just because of one person, Bea, not because of waitress. Three examples, hostess nice, waitress terrible attitude, executive chef comes and helps out. Fast forward years later, Bea, executive chef, ends up leading 200 employees and gets promotion after promotion after promotion. Why? Because nobody remembers average and ordinary, right? No one does. You've heard the saying, no one remembers normal. No one remembers average and ordinary. Nobody remembers it. Here's a person that took it to another level. Let me give you another story. It's the story about Lego. I'm a Lego guy, so I'm a big fan of Lego. My kids love Lego. So this kid has all this money that comes in that he gets for Christmas. He decides to go and buy the Ninjago Lego kit for himself. And then one day, him and his father are going out. The dad says, leave your Lego at the house. I say this to my kids all the time so I understand what the father's doing. He says, leave the Lego at the house. What does the kid say? Luke says, no, I want to take this stuff. So he takes the uh, Lego with him, Luca, and they go and he ends up losing it. So he comes back, that's it, I told you so, but he's upset. Luca's disappointed because this was his Ninjago that he bought with all the money that he saved. He decides to write a letter and send it to Lego, and this is what the letter says. Hello, my name is Luca Apps, and I'm seven years old. With all my money I got for Christmas, I bought the Ninjago kit from Ultrasonic Raider. The number is 9449. It is really good. My daddy just took me to Sainsbury's and told me to leave the people at home, but I took them and I lost JZX at the shop as it fell out of my coat. I'm really upset I have lost them. Daddy said to send you an email to see if you will send me another one. I promise I won't take him to the shop again if you can. Luca, they respond back, Lego, and this is what they say. 
He told me to tell you, Luca, your father seems to be a very wise man. You must always protect your Ninjago minifigures like the dragons protect the weapons of spin jitsu. Sensei Wu also told me it was okay if I sent you a new J and told me it would be okay if I included something extra for you because anyone that saves their Christmas money to buy the Ultrasonic Raider must be a really big Ninjago fan. So I hope you enjoy your J minifigure with all his weapons. You will actually have the only J minifigure that combines three different J's into one. I'm also going to send you a bad guy for him to fight. Just remember what Sensei Wu said, keep your minifigures protected like the weapons of Spinjitsu. And of course, always listen to your dad. Can you imagine that letter comes back? So watch what they just did. They spoke kids' language, Lucas' language, seven years old. They protected the dad and said, always listen to dad. And they still allowed his man imagination take place by thinking the emails coming from Sensei Wu. Imagine what that does to the kid, and imagine what that does to the uh, father. Now, how many emails do you think they get every day? H how many people do you think contact them every day? These types of stories, somebody may say, well, Pat, is there really a currency to it, a return to it? I can tell you one thing for a fact. Somebody may look at this and say, Pat, I'm not really sure if there's a way to monetize this for uh, Lego. I can tell you one thing. The person who is doing this and responding back, that person's value goes up. Not, maybe not the company's value goes up. That person's value goes up because the customer is always going to know how they were treated. Let me, give, let me give you another story here. The next one is the famous legendary story of Nordstrom's, how this man one day decides to return tires. And people say, is this a myth? Is this real? Is this a legend? I don't know if I buy this or not. So then later on, they go and verify this with the president of Nordstrom's, okay? They go to Eric Nordstrom, and they say, did this story really happen? And they say, yes, this actually did really happen. What do you mean this really happened? You mean to tell me one day a man comes in with two tires and says, I bought these tires from here, and I need you to take it back? And Nordstrom's employee took it back. I know we have a return policy, but you took back tires. You don't sell tires. And the president says, it is true. That did happen. The story is from the 70s because at that time, we bought several tire stores in Alaska and we turned them into Nordstrom's. And at the time, former customers who bought the tires from the building that used to be a tire shop, they brought it in. So we said, look, since we bought the tire shop and it used to be a tire shop, we'll take the tires back. They took the tires back and they gave these customers money for tires. Like, we're not a tire shop. That story has been told since the 70s. We're talking 50 years of marketing for Nordstrom's just because of customer service. How do you monetize how much marketing value that has brought? How many books have written about it? How many videos have talked about it? How many articles have been written about that? That's what you call the power of customer service. You can't put a dollar to it, but the amount of marketing it brings is absolutely amazing. Let me give you another one. Some basic ones for you. Here's a guy that sees an older man walking out of Wendy's, and he decides to use the umbrella to make sure he goes to his car without getting wet, and he's using that. Just a basic employee comes out to help. There's not a story to it. You don't have to do something significant for people to remember it. This is just another example of doing this. Here's another picture of an employee working at Target, and you notice this kid right there that he's got the shirt and the tie, the employee of Target is helping him look better to go get his job when he goes to job interview. Of course you're going to remember a story like this. Let me give you another one. One time in Pennsylvania, this 89-year-old man is trying to get some food, but it snows in because Pennsylvania snows in a lot. And he wants to go buy food from Trader Joe's, but he can't because he snowed in. So he calls his daughter. His daughter calls Trader Joe's. Trader Joe's doesn't have a delivery policy. He says, listen, my father's 89 years old. I, I'm tr he's trying to get some food, but he can't. I just wanted to call you see if there's anything you can do about this to see if we can get him some food. I know you don't deliver, but we'll pay for it. So the lady working at Trader Joe says, listen, don't worry about it. I'm going to go ahead and deliver whatever your father wants. Just give me the list and don't even worry about having to pay for it. They deliver everything uh, her father wanted within 30 minutes from Trader Joe's and the father gets the food because it was snowed in. Again, another story where somebody's going to remember. Let me give you another story here. This is another story of somebody who goes to Morton Steakhouse, is on a flight. It's the story of Peter Shankman. He's on a flight. He's flying back. He sends a tweet saying, you know, I arrived at the gate by this time. It'd be great for me to get a steak, you know, and I land at this time, this airline. I'd love to have a steak, right? He arrives, leaves the gate, Morton Steakhouse is waiting outside with the exact steak he ordered, and they delivered it to him. 
And he's like, you got to be kidding me. Post a picture, became a whole frenzy on social media. Guess who gets all the love for that? Morton Steakhouse, as well as the people that are working there. Again, it's going above and beyond what the other people are doing. Ritz Carlton, my CFO used to be working at Ritz Carlton for a long time. Their customer service at Ritz Carlton is absolutely impeccable. I was at this Ritz Carlton at Rancho Mirage uh, two nights. Uh, I, I was there once last week, came back, and I was there just yesterday. And I got to tell you, anytime I go to Ritz Carlton, very predictable, great customer service. And, and I have endless stories of my CFO that I have to hear from on how incredible customer service Ritz Carlton has. Respect to them. Here's a story of a family that goes to Ritz. They stay there. The kid leaves his stuffed giraffe, which is the one he goes to sleep with, at the hotel. Father calls back saying, listen, my son left his stuffed giraffe there and and i really got to get this if you got a kid that has a stuffed uh, you know animal you know how it is to them it's very emotional connection i got to get this yeah please send this back to me ritz carlton doesn't just send it back to them ritz carlton takes this stuffed giraffe they take pictures by the pool they take pictures in the spa they take pictures of this thing they create a small little booklet they send the kid the stuffed giraffe back with the book saying while you was while your uh, giraffe was here here's some of the experiences uh, he did. Just think about that small little thing. That may cost an additional 20 bucks, an additional 45 minutes of doing that, but the story lasts a lifetime. I'll give you another story here. Amazon always gets a black guy. It doesn't matter what it is. If, if Jeff Bezos gives away $95 million to an organization, they'll say he didn't give enough. If, if Amazon goes out there and you know, wants to create jobs, they'll say it's not enough. A- anything Amazon does is never enough. It's always black guy media. Today, maybe this may be a good thing for them. One time, this father buys a PlayStation for his kid, and he wants to get it for his kid for Christmas. So they deliver it, but they drop it off at the front and someone steals it. He calls Amazon saying, they st- somebody stole this PlayStation from front of my doorstep. I was getting it for my kid. I have to get this for my kid. He's pleading, he's talking to them. He's trying to convince them that this took place. Amazon finally says, listen, let us see what we can do. He gets off the phone. It's not thinking Amazon's gonna do anything. Next thing you know, Amazon decides to send him another PlayStation, no cost for shipping and handling, and they deliver it to him before Christmas Day. The father starts talking about it with everybody. This is, again, a small little thing they had to do. Amazon can't afford to do something like this, but the story lasts a lifetime, and that's Amazon. Stories that many times you don't hear about. Last but not least, Starbucks. There's this lady that works at Starbucks. One of her customers is deaf. He keeps coming in because he's a regular. She feels bad because she can't communicate with him. She ends up part-time on the side learning how to speak sign language just to communicate with this customer. The customer comes back saying, I cannot believe A Starbucks employee took the time to learn how to communicate with me in my language. Imagine the value of that. So again, remember this. I'll give you from two different perspectives. One, you're running a business. You are the entrepreneur. And you're looking at the saying, should I be talking about customer experience? Not just customer service, customer experience. This is all customer experience stories I'm sharing with you. Should I talk about this? Should I start spending more time about this? Every time we had... We would, at one point, I would have an initiative saying, listen, here's what I want to do. I want to do giveaways. We gave away $6,005 Starbucks cards. We said, we're going to give away to charity. We walked into people who were clients of ours, and we did a giveaway. We walked into five clients' workplaces, surprised them, and saying, you're going to Disneyland on us because that's what they want to do for their kids. We would find that their wish list just to give them that kind of an experience. Our employees have the ability to talk to one of our agents or our clients and say, hey, I noticed this birthday's coming up or that things coming up. I have a budget to send them a gift. They have the budget to send them a gift if they want to because these small little markers are the differentiators because between somebody who wins loyalty with their customer and somebody doesn't. So if you're the entrepreneur running a business today, remember this, 40 years ago, 30 years ago, even 15 years ago, you could get away with somebody saying bad things about you. You can't today. Today, everybody has Yelp, all these other things that they can go say stuff about you, right? When it comes down to customer service, it is more important today to give an incredible customer experience to your customers than ever before. And let me give you the other side. You may be saying, Pat, I'm not an an entrepreneur. I work for a company. Why should I go above and beyond? I'm on a flight yesterday from American Airlines, back from Palm Springs, right? I walk in, the lady is standing in front of me. I'm standing for 45 seconds. She's looking at me, doesn't say, how are you? Not one time. She's looking at me, not saying, how are you one time, okay? The employee behind her, it's like, hi, how are you, how you doing? I take my jacket, I say, can I get my jacket? Not right now, after we order the drinks. He says, I'll take the jacket, I'll hang it up. He hung it up. Same company, two different employees. 
So who gets bad reputation? Does American Airlines lose here? No, because American Airlines has somebody that's doing the right thing. She, her brand, takes a hit. Because watch this. I have an employee that works for me. Her name is Alexis Moody, okay? Alexis Moody started helping me 15 years ago. And I was paying her $400 a month. That's all I could afford to pay her because at that time she was giving me a few hours a week to help, okay? $400 a month. I was 25 years old, so 16 years ago, okay? And she's helping me. She was a single mother at the time, and she was doing this on the side to help me out. Then all of a sudden, I'm working with her, and I start getting stories. Did you know Alexis did this? Did you know Alexis did that? Did you know Alexis did this for me? Did you know Alexis did that for me? And she's not telling people to tell me this story. All these stories are coming back to me. I said, she did that? Yeah. She did this? Yeah. Huh. Maybe I got to lock her in. Then I locked her in, and I locked her in. Alexis, what do you need? What do you want? Then I send her to the spa. Then I took care of her. Then we traveled all over the world. I send her places. What do you want to do? Everything with Alexis, because it's so hard to find a person like Alexis. Guess what? Fast forward today, Alexis drives a nice 7 Series BMW. She's got two kids. She's got a nice place over here. She owns a piece of the company, and she officially got promoted to director. Why? Why? Because her company, Alexis Moody Incorporated, the value went up because of what she does when nobody's watching. And CEOs, entrepreneurs, come. say I don't notice what she does. Say I'm a CEO that doesn't take care of her. Say I'm a boss that doesn't take care of her. You don't think the marketplace will? You don't think the thousands of people she's treated royally are going to say, Pat doesn't want to take care of her. I'll hire her. You don't think you're watching this right now, you're going to go search it to find out who she is? Her service is that good and she deserves this much love for what she does. Again, company, pay attention to it. More important than ever today. As an employee, salesperson within a company, pay attention to it because it increases your value of what to do. Become a better person when it comes down to customer experience. Having said that, there's two other videos I want you to watch. If the topic of customer service, customer experience is important to you, I got two of them. One of the videos I want you to watch has been shown at uh, Microsoft, Google, uh, uh, Stanford, Oh, because I get these messages about this video. It's titled Customer Service versus Customer Experience. It's a very simple video explaining how to do this. And the other one is 19 mistakes to avoid uh, when it comes down to customer service. I do one of these videos. Both of them have to do with top topic. Click on them to watch. And again, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so. Thanks for watching, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>